Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to the tutorial on how to UV map Korra from Legend of Korra, The Last Airbender. In the previous tutorials, we have UV map her head, her body, and her accessories. Today, we're gonna cover her hair. By UV mapping her means that she's going to be ready for texturing, which is where the magic happens. So I'm really excited about this. Let's go ahead and UV map her hair. But if you are new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. A software includes Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and so much more. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. Bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get Cora UV map so that she, we can actually get her ready for texturing. All right, here we go. Her hair. So last time we did the accessories and now we're going to do her hair. Oh, let's go to object mode and let's grab these pieces. There's a variety of pieces here. So let me grab them all because I am going to isolate select them. Bing. All right, so these pieces, uh, some of these are actually the same piece over and over. So let's get started with the big one. It is hollow. You guys can do a bunch of things. I know it's gonna be weird, but I'm planar mapping from Y and then applying. And then I am going to double click, shift right click, unfold, unfold. And that looks okay. We can also do the football cut, just like that we did with the head. So for example, if I want to split it at the back here, where is the back? Let me press the number one. <laughs> I'm gonna tweak that vertice a little bit. Just kind of scoot it to the left. Wee. Maybe down a little. Wee. Okay, so when we did the head, we did it like in a football cut, like American football. Sorry, I need to you know make sure that's clear. So I'm gonna do something similar. I'm gonna go ahead and just go up here and then I'm gonna go and make like a, basically like a Y. I'm trying to get a better, a better cut. We'll see how this goes. Shift right click, cut. Then we're going to double click. Oh, I, I missed an edge, I can tell here. So cut and then unfold, unfold. All right, did that give me better results? What's happening here? Oh, so there's a tiny little edge that I missed. Oops, right there. So let me grab the edge and also cut. All right, face, unfold, unfold. All right, so that looks better. UVs look better. I think that's going to be... Okay, now there are some areas that need some love, like here, just because they're actually extrusions. So let me just go ahead and grab those, and then they will get their own UV map. So this will be UV mapped, cylindrical mapping. I'm gonna move it aside and unfold, unfold. It's huge, but I'm gonna scale it down. And then do the same thing for this one. Make sure I don't grab anything I don't need, which I did. So let's go ahead and do that. So again, UVs, cylindrical mapping, unfold, unfold. Move aside, and I think for this one, I forgot to grab the bottom faces, which is going to be important. So let me grab those again, cylindrical again, move it aside, and then I can unfold again. So missed a piece and that's okay. Let me double check with this one. <laughs> I want to miss something here too. Uh, I think I selected something that I wasn't supposed to. That edge right there. Uh, cut. And move aside. And then this one needs to go back to its home. Stitch together. Okay, let's unfold this one again. There you go. It looks like a, like a monkey. <laughs> All right, that uh, looks a little better. Yep, all right, great. Now remember, I'm doing this in Substance Painter. If I had to like manually texture this in like Photoshop or something, that would be pretty challenging. So it depends on what software you're going to be using because if this was gonna be in Photoshop, I really would want these lines to align so that when I draw in Photoshop, it'd be a lot easier. All right. Moving on, let's do this one. Let's go to object mode. Uh, it looks like a cylinder. There's like a floating face. 
What is that? Boop. And you probably don't see these, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete them, which will help with the seam. UVs, cylindrical mapping, close it. Now I want that seam to be at the front, I guess, or the back of the ponytail. So basically facing the skull. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the projection and try to get that to actually give me a seam in that direction. Now you can see that the projection is not perfect. So I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of tweaking. Uh, let's see, I'm trying to get it a little better. And not, not great, but let's go ahead and, and work with what we have. So I'm gonna scoot this over. And like always, I'm going to unfold. All right, so that's looking a little better. And now I just gotta figure out what the seam is. So if I want the seam to be along here, then I'm going to cut that. So I'm gonna cut, and then I am going to stitch together. All right, let's go to faces, unfold, unfold, and let's see what we get. That looks pretty good over here. The edges actually look pretty good too. Let me check my edge here. Okay, that one I can actually sew together. And that one belongs over there. And then I have an interesting cut over here, which I feel all of this should be sewn. So let me just go ahead and sew these and see what happens. There, okay. I guess I do have to cut it along there. Let me press the number one. I feel like my cut didn't go all the way up. So I just go follow the edges, pink. And so I'm gonna have to just manually select the edges or I think the cut's actually right here. All right, let's cut this one. And the issue is, is that it doesn't know that it's supposed to open up like a banana. Here we go. So now it's actually working. Okay, perfect. So let's turn on the grid, see how that looks like. And the main part looks good. There's a little, little pulling around here. It could probably help by adding a little bit of mesh. So I can add a couple of edges here and try to smooth it out a little bit more, but you know, that's totally up to you when I continue working on it. But um, I think that is going to work. So I'm gonna unfold one more time, and I think that looks actually pretty good. All right, a little chat, oh, what's this? I have a hole or something. Oh, these got separated along the way. So let me go ahead and sew and sew. So again, because I made changes, let me unfold. All right, perfect. Scale this down. And moving on to these little pieces. Now these pieces are basically planar maps. So UVs, planar mapping. And what I'm actually gonna do is use the camera. So UV planar mapping options, choose the camera, kind of look at it and then apply. Move it aside. And I'm gonna cut one of the edges, the one that's actually inside the skull. So I'm gonna grab these edges, double click, shift like click cut, and then I'm going to unfold. So just like a banana. And that should do be okay. All right, moving on. So that's kind of like the master plan, except for the ending here. That's not, that actually looks terrible. So let me scroll in here. Let me turn off the grid and make sure that the edge actually gets cut too. So let's cut this, double click, unfold, unfold. Did that make it better? Yes, it did. Yep, okay, great. Let's do that again. So instead of uh, planar mapping it, cutting it on both sides and then splitting it, what I'm doing is just kind of just doing the same thing, except I'm just keeping one edge cut and then unfolding. So again, I'm gonna stare at it, with the camera, go to planar mapping camera. There we are. I'm gonna select the edge that I wanna cut, which is going to be the one inside the seam here. 
no one really, the chances of somebody seeing that seam is significantly less than this seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. And then I am going to unfold, unfold. There we go. Ooh la la. I'm gonna turn on this shaded. It's a little easier to see. Okay, that's UV mapped, that's UV mapped, that's UV mapped. This is UV mapped. This is not UV mapped. I think this one and this one are the same. Let's find out. Uh, mesh, transfer attributes, options. Let's go to component and transfer. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> it was the same one. Perfect. All right, let's grab these. It's the same story. UVs, planar mapping. I'm going to move it aside. The edge that most people are probably not going to see is the one next to her forehead. So I'm going to double click there. I'm going to cut, unfold, unfold. I don't know. This is very relaxing. Some people find this very stressful. Um, and I can understand why, because, you know, especially if you don't know what's going on, it's like, what's happening? But um, once you get used to comfortable with UV mapping, it becomes, in my opinion, extremely relaxing because it's like the same thing over and over and you get to see results really quickly and it's getting ready for texture, which is always really exciting. Um, so yeah, for me, this is super, super relaxing. Uh, if you do find UV mapping stressful, I always recommend my students to just put on some classic music. Don't listen to like heavy metal because then you're going to want to throw your computer out the window. Just relax, put on some lavender candles, something like that. Anything to kind of keep you relaxed through this experience, because at first it's very painful, but eventually um, it's relaxing. And of course, we all want... Uh, AI technology to get this out of the way so that we can just focus on the great stuff, which is texturing. All right, cylindrical mapping for this one. Now the seam is in the back right now. I actually want it to be on the left side because that's the one near her head. And that way people will see that seam less. So I'll put that seam there. Not the best projection. This is a little wiggly. So let's see if we can get it going. And also there, these top faces are inside the mesh. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete them, which will make it easier to UV map. Oh, and there's an extra face in here. How interesting. All right. Let's see what we get. I can already tell the bottom might not work out, but let's see. Unfold. Yep. Uh, the top didn't get cut all the way up. Yep. So the seam is here. Let's grab this one. Shift right click cut. And these little edges need to be sewn. So, and the bottom, uh, let's make sure it's cut all the way at the bottom. So cut and sew. Unfold, Oop, unfold, unfold. There we go. Turn on the grid to see how it looks like and so I just noticed this little dot there and I was just like, that's not right. Uh, this little circle, it should be like a banana, completely peeled open. So cut, unfold, unfold. Okay, that's way better. Uh, let's see, select this one, shift select this one. Let's see, mesh tools, transfer attributes option. Let me reset my settings here. And as you can see, that doesn't work. But if I choose topology, that doesn't work. So it looks like it may not be the, I think it is the same one. At this point, you can either just duplicate it, right? Because it's the same object. So you can control D and then just basically place it over here and then delete it. Or maybe it's not the same one. Maybe it's over, it's changed. All right, that's one option. The other option is just to UV map it. It doesn't take very long, so I might as well go ahead and do that. So let's go ahead and grab all of this, rotate it to the left so it's facing the face. Not the best cut I've ever seen, and that's okay. All right, let's see. The edge is in the right place. I want this edge cut. I'm going through here, and I might as well cut. So whoops, go back, cut. And then I do want these guys to get sewn together. So let me go ahead and stitch together. Mm, the bottom may be an issue. Let's double click, unfold, unfold. And now I got a tweak. So let's turn off the grid because it's a little busy. Uh, these edges need a home. So let's stitch together. And then you mystery piece. Where do you belong? 
Or are you an extra floating face? This is why it's always good to UV map stuff because you'll notice like random things like that's not, that should not be there. <laughs> like, why, why are you there? So uh, let's turn on the grid, see how that looks. Actually, it looks pretty good. The top looks okay. Yeah. Double check, double click, unfold, unfold. And voila. UV mapped hair. Cool. Send a to pivot, delete that history, freeze the transformations. Let's go do our textile density. So get, set, woohoo. And then let's go ahead and lay out. Oops, undo, layout. There we go. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I'm gonna isolate, uh, remove that. And what I wanted to do was see if I can squeeze my hair with the accessories. Now, as you can see, it's kind of taking up more space than I expected, but I can actually move these around to uh, to fit the space a little better. So the big one, of course, is going to be the, the skull itself, which is this one. And I am gonna scale it down. Actually, let me scale all of them down just a little bit. Uh, let's scale them down. Deselect her, deselect the face. I do have eyebrows that I need to work on. And, ooh, there's something not EV mapped that is really glaring here. What are you? I miss a piece. Oh, I missed this piece. I'll fix you in a second. Let's focus on this. All right, let's turn off the grid because it's a little busy. And another thing that we could do is actually select everything and then actually do the textile density. So we can get, we can set, and then we can lay out and see how it goes. So there you go. Now, again, I'm not a big fan of how it lays things out. Um, the grid, all the grids should be the same, which they are. Uh, I do want the hair to actually have a little bit more space and it looks like I have hair to spare. So, or room to spare for the hair. So let me grab these guys, all the hair, well, at least the big pieces, the major pieces, and let's grab some faces and scale them up. And I'm gonna move them up because there's more space up here. So I, especially this one, I really want this one to have significant texture information. All right. I still need to do that one. <laughs> all right, let's see what's going on here. Uh, all right, let's move things around. Do, 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 do. That can go down here. Now, if I was texturing this in Photoshop, I would be placing everything in areas that, okay, this is the hair, this is the accessories, but since I'm going to be using Substance Painter, I mean, I still would prefer that the hair remain together, um, but uh, it's not like, it's not super necessary. And I also said that I was gonna probably use X-Gen to texture her hair. So that's probably what I'm going to be doing later. Uh, I am gonna show you guys how to texture it in Substance Painter so you guys can kind of create your own uh, substance material. So I'm playing Tetris. That's usually what I'm trying to do here is just play Tetris, trying to figure out, okay, well, I want my accessories to be close together. I also want to make sure there's room for uh, the other pieces. And I also, I'm trying to figure out a place to put this foot. <laughs> so I'm just kind of moving things around so that I can, I mean, there is room around here, uh, but I'm trying to figure out ways to kind of keep the feet together and things like that. So uh, let's see, this is the foot. Okay, well, let's move you closer to your friend. And then I guess you, ah, uh, let's see. This is slightly crooked. I'm gonna put them to near each other and kind of straighten them up a little bit and I think that's looking pretty good. Some of these are small. Not sure how much texture information I'm gonna get if they're so small, but I'm gonna make them bigger so that I can get a little bit more texture information here. Again, the reason why I'm doing that is because I can, there is space. 
So I'm trying to maximize my zero to one space and it's, it's, uh, you know, it takes a little tweaking and things like that. But, um, the point is that we're, I'm trying to make sure that if there's like blank holes and stuff like that, or if I can make something a little bit bigger and there's room for it, then I'm going to take advantage of that space. Now I focus on big pieces first, right? So the skirt, uh, the skull, things like that. Um, I wish actually this one was a little bigger. And we also are trying to avoid overlapping, so let's keep an eye on that. And I just make sure that everything just stays inside the zero to one space. And then we can bring it into a substance painter for texturing. Oop, I must have moved something here. So unfold, unfold. There we go. Let's do the same here. Then I can scale it up a little more. Cool. Let's get that one missing piece. Pink. Okay, pink. There it is. I think it's the same one. So let me try. Select that one, shift select that one, and then we're gonna to go to mesh, transfer attributes, options, choose component, transfer, and it was, cool. Delete the history, all that stuff, and then we have a new piece, which I'm gonna move, because currently it's overlapping with the other one. Again, deselect everything, pink, 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 and then I can find a home for it. Maybe make it slightly bigger because I think I have the space. And then I'm going to do the same thing for all the other pieces. Just make it a little bit bigger. Maybe I can put these guys together and make them also a little bit bigger. I'm not too worried about the bottom of the foot. Make you a little bigger. Scoot you, scoot you over. Maybe make you a tiny, tiny pick bigger. Is there room for you to be just a little bigger? Again, it's like Tetris. Do, 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 And my goal is to try to maximize the zero to one space as possible. So if I can get a little bit more texture information on these guys, then I am going to do my darnest to do so. All right, I mean, there is some space around, but I think that looks good. We managed to put all the accessories and all the hair in one shader. Now that she is basically done UV mapping, the next part is to texture her. So let's take a look at all her glory. There's her UVs for her accessories and hair, her face and head. Then we have her body. And the only thing I'm really missing is basically her eyebrows, which uh, it's going to be part of the hair, which it's just a planar map. We're going to do really fast. Her eyes are going to be totally different. I'm going to replace them with something else. So basically I am done with my UVs. That's pretty exciting. That means that she's basically ready for texturing. Again, don't forget to delete the history, center the pivot, freeze that transformations because these UVs will move. Make sure that you delete those histories because sometimes if you open up a file and your UVs have moved, it's because of your history. So make sure you delete that history and freeze the transformations. Otherwise, uh, leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Did you learn a new tool? Did you find anything really interesting or surprising? Let me know. Um, I love reading your comments. I may not be able to answer all of them, but I do appreciate your comments. And also please like and subscribe. If you learned a thing or two and you wanna see more content like this, feel free to like and subscribe, that would be amazing. And if you share my videos with your friends, that would also be amazing. Take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free downloads such as 3D models, resources, and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com and there you will find some e-courses. That's another way that you can support me which is uh, purchasing an e-course or two. Those are deep dives into Maya. If you wanna learn how to model the Tyra Pisa, model a chess set and texture it and animate it, or even uh, learn how to create a still life, those e-courses are for you. So please consider purchasing a course or two. Again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you taking the time. In the next video tutorial, we're gonna bring Cora into Substance Painter and start texturing. I can't wait. And keep creating and I will see you next time.